how are you going to motivate Luke? I, I like to see that video. Well, motivational. Um, one, we're recording. So, hello, everybody. Well, uh, but, yeah, you know what? Let's just start it off. Uh, Big Bucket of Chicken. We're episode uh, 18 here, guys. Yeah, we're getting up there. We're getting up there. And you know what I decided? I, I decided this. What's the side? Uh, going forward until I hear otherwise or see better results, I'm going to keep the episodes as one big chunk, one hour. Um, I think it's better. And you do a lot know. of work to break those up. It's not, no. When, see, the thing is, when I break them up, I don't really put too much editing into them, like all the pictures and the videos like oh. I usually do. Because what I have to do is to, to break them up, make sure I time them right, make sure, like, you know, yeah, uh, you're not, everything, everything syncs up so, like, you don't miss anything. You're not so mid-sentence. Instead of, <laughs> instead of editing, you know, the actual clips or the topics and uh, putting, like, funny pictures or videos or anything relating to what we're talking about, I've just been cutting it up and then... It, t- it does take more time because then you have to take every video, produce it, which basically turns it from a from a, whatever program I use file to an AVI file, which, by the way, is so much faster. I was doing MP2s, um, which was good quality, but not the best quality, and it would take like an hour and a half to produce and like four hours to upload to YouTube. I do the AVIs, which makes the screen just a little bit smaller on YouTube. It takes like 11 minutes to produce and like seven minutes to put up on YouTube. So, Can I, I just I tell all the assholes that aren't watching this what they're fucking missing? Let me just do this real quick. See? Your... You're not seeing Lou's uh, weak attempt to open a beer on four times. Let me see you do that with another beer. Oh, you know that's never going to happen, Lou. You spent a weekend up here, and if it wasn't a can, I handed it to you. I was like, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> well, this isn't a can of beer, but there is beer inside of it. I want to take it, I want to get it out of it, and then put it in, and out of it, and into me. <laughs> get in my belly somehow, it's stuck. So, uh... Then again, I've, I've never paid for beer so fancy, you couldn't <laughs> twist the cap off, if you can tell. You know I like? I like that you're both wearing camouflage hats. I think you guys... The same like, year. Like, These are like the, the newest army. ones. Like, yeah, we're totally... We're gonna go, we're gonna go accomplish stuff. <laughs> I, I, I know. Like, well, that's the thing is that I, I actually just like the hat, but I have gotten those compliments. Oh, good choice. Yeah, that's the, that's the U.S. Marine Corps hat. I was like, no, it's a pirate's hat. I don't fucking care. <laughs> like, oh, wait, wait a second. I think people like, did the people like look at you kind of weird? Like, is he, was he in the army? I don't. Did he serve, <laughs> did he serve this great country with his pirate's hat? I did. Like, I, I think sometimes people look at me and I'm like, no, I, I did nothing. I, I I just, I, I am a, I'm a draft dodger. I apologize. <laughs> yes. I'm a draft dodger. Um, if, there, if there was a draft, though, this, there would be so many drafts. Like, and it, we, we, we wouldn't even have to hide. They wouldn't have enough manpower to round us all up. Just roll, go to a bar. Like, is everyone here between the ages of 18 and 38? We're like, present. Not oh, fuck you guys. Piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm right here. Jump, jump, pick me up and carry me outside, big guy. Well, think about it. They'd have great success because... Think about it. You're in a bar. You're trying to bang the hot chick. What what screams, I'm more of a man than, give me a gun and I'll go kill an Arab. You want to fuck me before I leave, baby? But Boom. you know, down the street from your house, Nate, that exact conversation's going on. It's like, I'll go over there. And I'll stop the Palestinians. I'll save Israel by my bare hands. <laughs> so, listen... Speaking around the corner from my house, apparently prostitution didn't pay well. Now, every fucking weekend, they have a garage sale. Every that house, The house that got raided? The blue, the blue house, literally, in, like in my backyard, and then the fence that divides me from the blue house. And I think I've commented on the 300-plus women with their select choice of men. So, you could just say black, you could just say black guys. When, when you yeah, no, no one's watching guys, this anyway. It makes you sound so much more racist, like... The urban type. <laughs> yeah, no one's gonna see this anyway. So, yeah, no. no. So, so now. No, great. No, no one's watching this. No one gives a shit. So listen. But I, I want to see. I want to see that garage sale. It's like, yeah, we dude. Have it's we're, funny. We're, we're selling this shirt tomorrow right? morning. I'll tag Did you guys. You that shirt before. No. <laughs> I'll, I'll tag you guys. In the picture, because the weight bench went from the sales rack 
to the curb, now just mangled on the curb. So the weight bench did not sell, Never, just so everybody's well aware. And it's it, it's hilarious, cause, and we all know about the faded band t-shirts that every 13-year-old girl has. It, Patty still might have new kids on the block somewhere. We know it. Or was that so too you, is that too far are you back? Saying they bought it from the whorehouse. Is that what you're saying? No, you could just tell. I mean, before they they uh, started producing kids and collecting welfare, they were they were in their mom's trailer singing Justin Bieber with their T-shirt stretched the fuck out because they didn't make them that big for the fat kid. No pun intended. Lou, you really you got an Artie Lang look puns. going today. Did does he not have an Artie look going today, Kev? What's Artie, fat white guy? Or... Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> back, back, back. Yeah. Uh, I'm starting I'm starting to see the uh, the great temples a lot, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's what made yeah, me think of Artie. Let's, let's take a look. Let's go through it. Like, yeah. Look at that. Impressive. And, it, and, it, and I got some. Yeah. You can't really. I'm too close. There's a lot on top. But it's really on the side. And like this side. You know what it is? It's like. We just watched X Men: Days of Futures Past, and that's what I, I really am. That I'm Wolverine. If you just stop working out, stop fighting Sentinels, <laughs> minus just, the like, abs and and pecs. You just lived at Arby's. Like you go, like you were like, where the fuck Wolverine? It's like like at Arby's on like come on, two, just, like sitting in the corner, Luke. just like popping open beer cans with his claws. Like I used to, I used to do stuff. Is he like, not? Like, is Lou not screaming he should have a character, the ex-superhero who now just lives at Arby and drinks beers? I mean, you can go from hero to zero, Lou, and it would be comedy. I could, I could, I could possibly do a video this week of like an ex-superhero. You literally just so like, a, like, I'm, a, like a shirt that's too small. I'm still like, laughing I right fight, now. I had to fight Ecto Man. Man, I broke my back one out, and then my shoe broke, and I took the bus home. He got away, but next time... I'm Once this it. Oxycontin kicks in, I'm going to go back and yeah. fuck him up. <laughs> Kev, can you write this script? I mean, you're a superhero um, um, expert. Oh, there's so many ideas popping in my head right now. But we've been saying that for like a decade. Like, that, that Lou is Wolverine if he let himself go. I used to have the mutton chop. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> I was like, hey, you bad Wolverine, what's up? I was like, hey... Thanks for no, uh, my name's Lou, but alright. We have to like trick you into getting angry, like we steal your hat email and you start like Argh! It hurts every time you come out, you know. Hey, hey, yeah. hey guys. Yeah. If um <laughs> if you really want to see a clusterfuck, the new McDonald's opens in nine days. And instead of the old style uh, McDonald's in Waterford, like the horseshoe, bang, you drive in one side, you you, you get in line at the drive thru. And then you come out the other. Bang. You got a meal. No confusion. Now there's several drive through windows. And do not enter and one-way signs. I guarantee you there will be these four accidents in week one. I'm calling <laughs> it right now. Well, what day did it open? Is it a weekday? It's in nine days from today. I drove by today and they have a sign out. Nine days. So. There's a sign. It, it said the biggest and nicest restaurant. So Wednesday. The biggest and nicest restaurant that's uh, rebuilt in Waterford is the McDonald's. <laughs> Aren't you going to take off work and film the grand opening? I hope so. Uh, yeah, I mean, we next Wednesday, I don't think I have shit going on. Please film it. Friday's my last day to close for the month. So, yeah, I got a whole other month to produce new business. So, yeah, fuck it. I'll take the day off and I'll just hang out at... The McDonald's all day, and it's eat. gonna be like it's gonna be like the ending scene of A League of Their Own. Like, no, Mr. Lowenstein, you do it. <laughs> Sniff, dun, 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 all the memories. Yes, Bye. yes. So, so um, anybody who is not from Waterford who's watching, come enjoy the grand opening. I wonder if like you, you're gonna get like a free McNugget or something. I mean, it's the grand opening. You can't here's just a piece, here's a piece of the charred old store. <laughs> Oh, and, a, and a nugget that was cooked in the fire. <laughs> it's hickory smoked. It's our new flavor, McNugget. Hey, Kev, what's on TV? Anything good? The Pirates. Are yeah, smoke. We're, we're winning 14 to 1 domination by John Lester, a stud on the mound. 
Yeah, you're so, right. so your boss Boston's playing Pittsburgh right now? No. Oh. Two oh. different leagues. Not until September. Oh, there's they're, they're different leagues. Oh my god. Hey, September. Yeah. Yeah, they're playing in Pittsburgh in September. I told you that. And, September what? Uh, it's when you're getting your surgery. We already had this discussion. I, th- I don't think you're going to be active for it. I mean, it's going to be like the week after. I don't know if you'll be able to make it. I could it. still it's watch in, the game. It's in Pittsburgh. I mean, if you want to discuss going there, I would love to go to PNC Park, especially since they're probably still going to be in the race for the rest of the season. But but anyways, guys, uh, you know, it's funny, like, you talk about McDonald's. You know, it, it, it's always been a big deal on Long Island because of, you know, there's, like, these fast food restaurants that aren't around here. And, and, and we know that, like, there's a few upstate places that aren't down here for whatever reason. But when they suddenly come here, it's, like, a big fucking deal. Like, when, they, when, uh, when one of the towns got an Arby's, like, there was a line of fucking cars, like, down down Sunrise Highway, like, waiting to get a fucking shitty roast beef sandwich. Well, and then they, op- and then they hey, opened a Dairy hey. Queen in Massapequa. It was like fucking chaos there. Listen this is here. Strange, it's like they're clamoring for this, really? It's some of the best fucking curly fries and cheese dip you'll ever have. And well, I don't give a shit what they say. There were Arby's out here, and especially a lot of the Queens, too. But they just started, like, dying off, and just until the last five years, they came back. But when... We might have talked about this already, but since we're on fast food, I live in Deer Park. Anyone who lives on Long Island will... Definitely concur. When Sonic opened two years ago, uh, you got a fucking there? Sonic down there. Listen, first of all, I I I will be the first. I never ever had the food. I don't give a shit about Sonic. I never even. I've eaten a lot of fast food. Obviously, did not even bother. Everyone said the food. Sucks. I need to break it to you guys. It fucking it blows. It, everyone it's said it sucks. But here's this. Here's the thing, Nate. The day it opened, I knew it was opening, but I, I didn't remember. I'm driving home. I'm coming off a highway onto Deer Park Avenue, and. <laughs> I'm in bumper to bumper traffic. All I can hear is choppers, fire hi, uh, sirens, and police sirens. So I thought it was like a, a gas explosion. As I get closer and closer and closer, that the intersection where the Sonic is is just it looks like you know the apocalypse day one hour three. There's just fucking cars jammed up on the sur- on like the fucking shoulder, <laughs> choppers circling. They hired like twenty extra people for Sonic that summer because they the line was so far down Deer Park Avenue, maybe like two miles, that they needed people to stand in the streets, the cross streets, to make sure they didn't block traffic going crossways. What the? F- so they had guys in like reflector vests twenty four hours a day, like telling people to wait. Honestly, for fast fucking food. Ridiculous, bro. Now let me tell you what I did yesterday. Well, I, it all started Saturday. I'm watching the news. And um, they were comparing um, the old style 1950s cheeseburger. They said, most people, you make the flat patty, the orange cheese, onions, and salt. That's it. <laughs> or they compared them to today's new burgers. You can barely get your fucking mouth around them because they're big and juicy, but appealing. Best burger I ever made. In a skillet, flat patty, caramels, or the onions, cheese, done. I'm really excited about my burger. I thought at least one of you would be like, Wait, yeah. Are you making a burger? Is that what you're telling us? I, no, I did happened. yesterday. Oh, you made one yesterday. Okay. And it I was a burger good. Lunch. Homemade burger left over from yesterday. But I agree. No matter how good, like, uh, for example, any Burger King McDonald's burger, listen, you might eat it. You're not happy about it when you eat it. One. No. no. Two, it fills you up for about five minutes. And then immediately you just feel like you ate, like, a piece of human flesh. And See, your, your mouth, your literally, throat. it gives you a film over your mouth and your teeth. You just feel like you ate a deer's asshole. And There's no way. Actually, that would be cleaner. King Burgers, like a Whopper, isn't just like dyed cardboard that's been soaked in like gasoline and shaped into a patty and they put like pickles on it. It's, it's fucking, it's like, it's like, it's like a cardboard. Yeah, I, I, I can't do it. I can't do fast food anymore. Um, Plus. Living on Long Island, especially in Deer Park, I mean, there are so many restaurants. There's actually places that make good burgers. I'd rather go to Five. Everyone is either for or against Five Guys. Their burgers are like a hundred times better, and their French fries are hundred. It's a little hey, more expensive, hey, hey. but it's ten times better than McDonald's or Burger King. You actually watch them make the burger with yeah. hot meat. Oh, you do? You know? Yeah, it's awesome. because. Do, do you watch them use the fucking peanut oil, too? Because everybody in this world up here loves Five Guys. Guess who can't eat it? This guy. 
All right. I would have been the sixth guy. They actually called me. They were like, yo, you, you can probably me. eat the burger. You just can't have the fries. I don't go. Know. Listen, Lou, it's so bad that I do not enter an establishment with um, any 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 kind of peanut oils or, or peanut shells. Fuck that. So right. even if you even if you walked inside and like tripped and hit like into a bucket of peanuts, like you just die. I would I be. Feel, I, I feel bad for sluts because if they're really if they're a fan of that place, I just feel like every time that they get shit mixed up with when people when they say I just love Five Guys, like, <laughs> like I just feel like that happens a lot to them, and I feel bad for them because it's like no, the burger place, yeah, okay, yeah, there's some <laughs> dry yeah. mouth, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Five guys, okay. <laughs> Train joke. Well, they put they put extra fries in the bag. Okay. Or <laughs> right, yeah, how about that? How about that for a date? Like, you you meet this girl at the bar, and you know she's a little skanky, and she's like, "Yeah, let's go do five guys." So you call four of your buddies up, you bring her to a hotel, and she's like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, usually <laughs> when a girl suggests gay shit, I'm gonna walk away. Like, let's do five guys. Okay. Yeah, I'm not into that. I just met you, but you know what? I could I could. Play swords with five, four of the strange guys. I can do that. Whatever. Let's, let's <laughs> you do five. Turn into snagglepuss. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> Think about it. I mean, we just, just let the lion out of the closet. Well done. <laughs> you had me at five guys. You, you, I have a feeling where uh, there's a lot of girls out there that like five guys that now refuse to talk to their boyfriends. And say, let's have five guys. They're like, uh, yeah, Chinese is good. Chinese is yeah. just fine with me tonight. <laughs> Honey, I thought you wanted five guys. Nah, 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 nah. I don't want a reputation. <laughs> Especially if he's overprotective and, and he, he accuses his girl of cheating all the time. Yeah. Really not a, it's really not a good thing to suggest. Explain to me that post on Facebook about five guys and how fucking good it was in your mouth, whore. It was a fucking cheese murder. I'm sorry. I mean. yeah, it's, it's, I'm telling you, it's, it's a rough world out there for those sluts that like to go to Five Guys and get burgers. Plus, on top of that, they're probably going to go to hell. So that's like an extra bonus. Even I have a little thing where it's like, that sounded gay. Like, I try to word, if I want to go to Five Guys, I got to word it in a way that doesn't make it sound. Hey, hey, kind of hey, gay. guys, I have to go there. I, I It usually comes up once a show, so. Is it. Cheating if you have five guys while your man's locked up, and I'm talking about the burgers, not five guys. Boom, get it. <laughs> well, that's like I, I think I think we brought up a good point when we did that show is because it depends on the on the amount of time that they're in prison. I think <laughs> four you know, months. That's a big. It's a big difference. You know, uh, if you go out the next day and have five guys, then okay. <laughs> There's something wrong with that. But if, if he's, three, he's doing a three-to-five stretch... See, I, hold on a second. Now, this this is going to be a, a, a challenge, but some way we will pull it off. I think we could all call our moms and be like, Hey, Mom, do you like Five Guys? And they would immediately talk about cheeseburgers. I have a feeling if, if we called... Um, somebody else's yeah. mom. I'm sure if I talked to my, I'm sure if I went downstairs and asked mom about five guys, the first thing in her mouth would be an orgy. Yeah, that one time, five guys, awesome. <laughs> then you were born nine months later. <laughs> but it was funny, it'd be like, five guys? No, half a dozen. <laughs> Better make it Bur six. Burgers. <laughs> well, we used, I mean, there was always like things like that. I remember we, in college, you remember the you you know the, the the caramel popcorn? It's called poppycock. Poppycock. Yeah, but it's but their slogan was it's the nuttiest, which I thought was interesting. As you're eating that, you're thinking of that. Oh, this is this is the nuttiest. The, yeah. the cluster yeah. nuts. Okay. I well, think listen, they a, play a lot on the packaging names. can be questionable, especially if you have that kind of mind. Like a couple episodes ago, you were playing with your 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 baby's toy, a little stuffed animal and i think the uh on the packaging was like made special for small hands <laughs> like yes that's yes like most sex toys does anybody yeah, want to compliment my shirt tonight small hands <laughs> no anything one... for anything for anals you gotta have small hands otherwise you know you can't really you can't really work with the big hands like i can't get it it's not i can't finish it <clears throat> i can't do it all right so <clears throat> 
I'm deep into um, rescue me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good choice of words. I'm real. I'm elbow deep in in my coworker. No, I said something like we, you know, that every time something happens at work, we always, you know, they say pause. You know, like you say like something that that sounds like an innuendo. So so today I I had like a script that I was going to give to somebody, but just the way it sounded, I was like, hey. Hey Anthony, come back here. Let me give it to you. And I was like, and everybody was like, "What?" Hey, like perks of management, like, motherfucker. Come back here, big boy. Let me give it to you. It's like I just I meant the script. Stop. It's funny. I say something at work, and it usually ends up in "shut the fuck up," "go away," or "shut the fuck up." So really, yeah. You know what? I'm uh, I'm. I'm doing a loan for a rabbi, so I'm actually learning a lot on how to... Fuck children? No, be... You know, like, you can't control the outcome of anything. You just, you know, being upset is... And I'm trying to utilize it because nine nine straight days, people will be like, Hey, Nate's here. I'm energetic. I crack jokes. But then I go right to red. The minute fucking something comes up on a loan I really want to close, I, like, lose it. Make everybody miserable for the day, but then I go back to my seat and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I can get that, no fucking problem. And then they're all like, hey dickhead, you just ruined everybody's day. A, B, and C's on the phone trying to fix your shit and, and what they're looking for, you have it. You know what I've been like, doing recently? I'm an asshole. Up at work? I just randomly sing God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood. Nice. Like, people, they, they perk up immediately. They're like, and there ain't no doubt about this land. God bless the USA. And people just perk up. They like fucking love it. Do you think um do you think and Lee Greenwood has Lee had five guys? Do you think he's had five guys, Lou? I don't really I don't really think about that guy. But what what I was gonna say is so are you telling us that you're, you're going to convert to Judaism? Is that what you're saying now? No, I'm just saying, like, you know, his loan is actually, actually not going well at all. And he's like, hey, I know it's tough, but there's a higher power. We don't control this. And I'm like, okay, he's very soothing. It's like, fuck, I want to punch people. And this guy's like, eh, it is what it is, dude. It's like, it's pretty calming. And then you like you realize you're like wow I'm a I'm really a dick, but whatever. Well, I I could definitely understand that. I, I can relate to that a lot. You know, you, you really shouldn't let things you have no control over bother you. And two, you should really not let yourself get all because it's very easy to go from like, oh my god, this is gonna go well to like ten minutes later you're like you're like you know oh my god I gotta fucking buy guns and. <laughs> and food and supplies for survival. And Look, what do you do for work? There's gonna be a water in the apocalypse. What's gonna happen? Like that, like that's how my brain like, like, like de evolves from like, hey, what's up? What's going on? How's everything going? So like, holy shit! Like, okay, I, I gotta get barbed wire. I need lots and lots of barbed wire. So anyway, check this out. Uh, farmers only did not go good for us. I think we were banned after the first thirty six hours. My profile, listen, I still get eat. The best thing is, you know, once you're signed up for a dating website, they don't ever let you go. Every day, four times a day, I get an email saying like, hey, Farmer0782652, check out the people in your neck of the woods. And it's the same 11 people. And uh, my profile was like, it wasn't deleted. They just, they just took out all the stuff that I said that was, you know, either negative or had vulgarity into, in it. And But, but if, unless I... Unless I take my profile down and block them from my email, you know, even if I unsubscribe from the, the website, oh, you're email, locked. They'll email you till the end of time to get you back. Like, hey, check out our new deal, nineteen ninety five, six months free. Your name on it. <laughs> That's nice. Sixty percent of the time, it works. Yo, it's all fucking the time. ridiculous, and it's the. And I'll be honest with you, I, I, I've, I've tried three different dating sites, and they're all essentially identical. This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, we've talked about it a bunch of times, but it well, really, you watching should go to farmersonly.com. Just look at it. You don't have to sign up. Just look at the pictures. The pictures on, like, the opening page are, like, beautiful women. And then as soon as you sign in, it's the people I shared with you. You know, it's, like, 
six pictures of a horse and then a fat chick with a horse. You know, it's me with, with bigger tits and no beard with a horse. It's like, I'm Cassandra. Want to hang out with me? It's like, no, I don't ever want to hang out with you ever. The, the fat chick, like, fat free milks for pussies. And she's got the fucking uttered in her mouth, like, yeah, all over her face. That would be good. It's that, or it's like some girl with a cowboy hat on, like, cowgirl, looking for my cowboy. It's like all this country shit and, and like, so, like twang lingo in her profile. And I'm like, you live in the fucking, you live in Pelham, Pelham Park in the Bronx. Like, what the fuck are you doing with a cowboy hat on? Yeah, I love like, it. Stop. Were you just smoking crack, banging black dudes last year? You're not. Now you're mean, looking for a cowboy. You know what I mean? Like, you're not in fucking Kentucky or Georgia. I mean, you go, you go anywhere outside of New York State, and not even New York State, outside of the five boroughs in Long Island, and even Long Island, out east, you're going to find, like, everyone's country. Like, everybody's a fucking, like, camouflage hat and a quad. Like, every girl on a dating site tries to pretend they like the things that guys like, so they get those guys. So, you'll see so many pictures, like, girls at baseball games, and girls shooting a shotgun, and girl riding a, an ATV... And it's like, you did that once. Or you get the opposite. You get, like, the well-traveled, very, you know, dependable, very ambitious girl where it's like she has eight pictures. One of them is her face. The other seven are, like, her in Rome. It's like, don't pretend like every other weekend you're in fucking Europe. You went to Italy once five years ago, and now you're trying to make it seem like you're this world traveler. And, like, it's all bullshit. Everything about dating websites is terrible because... There's the ratio of guys to girls is so slanted. I've told you guys this before. I'd have to imagine there's way it's more like, guys looking for free pussy out of dating no, websites. It's, it's it's yeah, it's way more guys. So like you'll see like a girl who's like in real life, like if we met at a bar, she's like a six. And I'm maybe like a four. You know, under a beer a neon beer light, I'm like a six point three or something, you know? <laughs> so you see her on the dating website, and these girls, because they get so many messages. Instead of, like, writing that in their profile, like, please don't email me because I'm swamped, we'll take a snapshot of their screen where it shows their inbox. So, like, on a good week, let's say, like, when I was, like, really aggressive and, like, messaging, like, 10 girls a night, like, hey, what's up, blah, blah, blah. You get, like, four or five responses. That's pretty good for me. I'm sure a better-looking guy's can maybe double that. These girls would show a picture of their inbox and it would say 300 new messages, 900 new messages, 865 new messages. Like, they're getting fucking 20 messages an hour, every hour of every day. So their ego is is enormous. So if you're a very attractive, you're off the fucking charts. You're nonstop getting hits from guys yeah, well, in a 50-mile radius. And if you're a, okay, a 5 or 6, you're still, in your head, a 10. And if you're a 10, you're a fucking 20. So it's, like, very, very, it's very, very, like, difficult and annoying. It's like, hey, what's up? We like a lot of the same stuff. Uh, how, how are you doing? And you won't even get a response. And you just think like, hmm, okay. And then they, you get a response. It's like all these girls say things like, uh, first of all, I don't want any one-word emails. Like, don't say just hi or what's up. Say something. And then when they reply to you, it's like, hey. Because they can. Because who gives a fuck? They have 700 more guys they can respond to right now on the spot. Right? I now want to create a dating page and just to annoy the fuck out of every girl who, who tries to be over sexy with their daddy issues. And that's why you're on fucking eHarmony in the first place, okay? If you're hey, that I, I, think the, I think I think the best site for you right now would be J-Date. Yeah. You love the Jews, so I think that would be awesome. I, you're like, hey, it's me. Like, I just would love to see... That like, who, that's what that's what people should do as a video profile. Like, I think every website should have that. I don't care about facts. I want to have someone like illustrate. Like, they'll show me props and stuff. Like, what they're really about. But you can make it really Jewy if you wanted to. You know, I think I think we need that. Well, I do whatever. I was leaning on like, how do you look up mail order Russian brides? I'm very interested to see the qualifications and what it takes to marry a girl from Russia via the internet. It probably takes like $200 cash and an email address. Like, I'm sure it's not that hard. It happens all the time. Challenge I a, accepted. I had a relative. I had a cousin. My mom's cousin, who was a, not a distant cousin, I don't want to say mail order bride, but definitely had like one of those like 
I'm marrying you to stay on this side of the border kind of marriage. And, like, it was just such an odd pairing. And, uh, I don't know, like, it was just, it was it, it was an Asian woman and a white guy. It wasn't, like, a Russian bride or anything. But, yo, know, that shit happens. Like, guys go to the Philippines. I had a guy I worked with at the furniture place. He never fucked a girl in, like, the United States. He would meet these girls and, like, Skype with them from the Philippines. Like, he was, like, 45, you know, maybe 100 pounds heavier than I am. And we'd meet these, like, 18-year-old girls from the Philippines and talk to them and their parents on Skype, promising, like, marriage and stability. Go to the Philippines and, like, fuck them for six weeks and then bring them back here. And they would come back here, use them to, like, pay their school bills and then fucking bounce on them. And, like, it happened to them, like, three times. Like, you know, like, it's, it's not that uncommon. It's pretty common, actually. Well... I'm just, I'm watching Rescue Me, and uh, I'm on the season where the, the, the captain has the mail-order bride, and, and she's smoking hot. Obviously, it's a TV show. But I wonder what kind of, um, what kind of girl goes on there and says, you know, marry me. For the right price, I'll come to the United States, regardless of, I mean, do they, I don't know, how deep do they get into it? Do they, do they want to make sure you don't beat them, or like... I just well, don't get it. When you marry someone to get him in the country, there is like a process, I guess, with like, uh, um, oh, what, what, who would that be? That would, that would be a uh, homeland maybe? security and shit, dude. Customs it's brutal. So maybe for six months they like kiss your dick once a week and like pretend they like you, but as soon as that shit clears, they're fucking gone. Man. It's not. It's actually. I have a um, someone that I worked with. She was from here. We go. Laughs everybody. Israel. Um, she was in this country, she was married, uh, she, she lived happily, and she said every six months, like, they put you in a room, one, they, they check your house to make sure you actually live there, and then, like, they put you in a room, and the first question's always, are you here to overtake the, the U.S. government? <laughs> She's like, I barely speak fucking English, I, I, I don't think I'm getting that close to the capital today, but, you know. Let me brush up. I'll, I'll I'll hit you with it next time. Yeah, I'll let you know. But yeah, it's it, it's pretty brutal. I never, heard, I never heard "kiss my dick" said love, lovingly before. I always feel like it's someone that gets angry and like "kiss my dick." But it's, that's interesting that people actually were like, "Okay, just just kiss it once a week." Like, good. I um, <laughs> I I I I wouldn't even know. <laughs> Was that, was that a flute? Was that like a, a is that like an Aladdin flute? Or next like, time, you know what? Next time I get that for two years, I'm gonna make someone play play my play my penis. The skin flute. Play play, play wind beneath my wings by Bette Midler. <laughs> On my no, it's cock. Right. On key, bitch. <laughs> Hit them. Domestic abuse commercial. It's gonna be horrible. Right. But uh, I like that. I like that Homeland Security like customs like method like. All right, question number four. You're doing very well. So, let's see. Where's question number four? Are you planning on taking over the United States government? No? Okay, no. We got to ask. We got to ask. <laughs> if you say yes, we have to shoot you right here. So, good thing you said no, because otherwise you'd be dead. And hey, listen. Body. Put the body bag and the paperwork. It's mm-hmm. crazy. I, I don't want to give it away, but that might be question number four. Three next time, so be fucking prepared, all right? Or we'll yeah, get you. It up every time. We are gonna fucking find out why you're here, okay? We take these questions and we crinkle them up and put them into a cool hat and we put them. <laughs> you are never gonna know when a government question's coming, so you better not lie. Hmm. Now, Maybe honestly, how about the country? How about shit, Dick, Iowa and Georgia? They literally are assigned military tanks now, like literally fucking tanks to roll through the streets of just like dick dickhead neighborhoods like hey it's uh the memorial day parades this year watch out jimmy's learning how to use the new rocket launcher in the police department could get fucking no. crazy out there today no it's serious like yeah what's, uh, what's the population of shit dick iowa <laughs> probably probably more than fucking we would imagine i don't imagine it <laughs> 
I just, I just like let it go. That was funny. Someone texted me the other day. They're like, hey, shit dicks, got a new number. Here it is. So I was like, shit dicks? That's funny. And Lou, didn't I use the I term just, shit yeah. dick with you last night? I was like, I was actually bitching about you, Kev. I was like, shit dicks never ready. Well, when you text well, me the last your time. iPhone, when you text me from the iPhone and you text more than one person or a picture, I told you, it comes up as like a download link. Oh. And it just never downloads. So if you text me some stuff and I just see download, I just pretend like I never got a text from you. Well, it must be the conversation from last week because now I feel every time I get in my fucking car and I turn Sirius on, I mean, Sirius Radio for me, it's real simple. It's 90s on the 9, Hair Nation, Ozzy Boneyard, and Lithium, which is like a, a, a mixed channel. And I'm Lithium's guaranteed... Like K-Rock. I'm guaranteed one Tosla fucking song on the ride to work now. It, it's like, it's, it's, it's amazing. Today, the song was Dirt. So, uh, if anybody's... So, next time you get in a cab, ask them. Be like, did you play on the album Dirt? <laughs> yeah, I'll so tell talking you. talking about Sirius Satellite Radio. So, my... Uh, a few weeks ago, remember I, I told you about that, uh, that that song about like the rape song we were listening to my uncle's house on Saturday radio? Oh, yes. That weekend, my mom and my dad had both had like a bug up their ass about satellite radio. So in the past week, they bought satellite radio. So my dad got it for his car. He, got, he has like a 93 Lincoln, but he has like the new face with the fucking satellite radio. It's like blue and lights up and shit in his car. It's pretty pimped out. But my mom wanted it for the house. So they send you the little thing and the, the player. And they have to hook up, you know, there's like an antenna piece mm-hmm. that has to get hooked up and point towards fucking Mercury or something so you can get the fucking satellite. And you had to see us, you know, like, this was like last weekend, trying to, me and my dad trying to like get this thing to work. It was so annoying. I was trying to explain to my mom because we never had, they never use a radio in our house. For some reason, my house or just this front of my house area, it's bad reception. I don't know if it's the power lines or the way the house is built. But we never used the radio. They would just play CDs or I would play my Spotify or something. So I tried to explain to her, like, we don't get radio signal. And you would never went up to the roof to put a fucking antenna up. The satellite's going to be the same thing. So, of course, they get the satellite, turn it on, no signal. You go, you take the, the, the fucking antenna and you walk, you know, it's in the middle of the front lawn and you get a signal. But, of course, you can't have the wire coming from the window out to your front lawn over, you know, you know, as you walk by, you have to get underneath it every time. So <laughs> well, my dad gets a ladder. He goes up on the roof, and he's standing on the roof. And I'm have the music as loud as it can go inside the house, so I can hear it outside the window. It's blaring inside the house, and it was like chops in and out. He's like, "Do you have it now?" I'm like, "Yes." No. How about he's like, it's like holding this thing in the, in the sky. Finally, we get it to work. We find a spot for it. So my dad decides he's gonna buy a flagpole and screw a flagpole to the center of our house in between the two windows on the second floor that sticks out, you know, five and a half, six feet out from the house and tape the fucking <laughs> the antenna for the satellite radio. Can we get so a picture? The flagpole. So now I'm going to take a picture of it and put it on the, on the big bucket page. On the, in the center of my house, there's a flagpole just sticking straight out. Not at an angle, it's just straight out. And the end of it's a fucking antenna pointing towards, like, you know, east or whatever. And still... It, it goes in and out. It's it just it's exactly the same as terrestrial radio. It's just instead of getting a signal from a tower here on Earth, you're getting it from a satellite in space. See, I and love Sirius. I can't live without Sirius. The point I was trying to make is like all this trouble, and like just send the fucking thing back. It's like 180 dollars a year for the car and the house. You know, it's double package or whatever it is. That's I'm expensive. Like, I'm like get the fuck out of here. So. So do they have the? Do they? Did they get music today? Is I mean, I guess that would be well, the question. She did your mom? To it in a few days, but every time she turns it on, like usually on the weekends, like you know, she watches the my sister's kid all day, so she doesn't like blast music. But on the weekend when she's cleaning and doing her shit, she puts music on. She puts on like a '70s station or something. But <laughs> over the weekend, it was like she's like, "Why is it going in and out? Fix it!" I'm like, "What do you mean fix it? I can't get that piece any closer to the fucking above the atmosphere." You know, I have to stand on the roof forever, pointing at east. Like Ugh. I would lose it. I like literally. I'd be so into a jam. I'd be like, "That's the song that makes me want to drink." And if it was cutting in and out, I would instantly probably throw the fucking radio. Well, do you have any issues? Like, if you're driving on like a 
horrible weather day. No. It does, doesn't get choppy. You know what's fucked up, Blue? I don't even have my antenna out the window. It literally is just resting in front of the screen. And, and really, the only time I use my boombox is on the weekends. I got the, the radio for the house. And then it's in the cars automatically. You just give them the product code. I, my antenna's not even outside. And you know there's a porch in between my kitchen and the outside. And I get perfect reception. Yeah. You know what it is? Because you're on top of a mountain. Like where no human being should live. <laughs> I'll never forget that that day at your house, and Kevin's dad comes up. First thing out of his mouth, and like I shook his hand, and said, "Hey, how you doing?" And uh, I said, "Hey, it's you know." I said something about like your neighbor, because like your house is here, and then directly above you is the next house. You know, it's like it's like high. Oh yeah, up the does it to the hill? And he looked right at me, and goes, "Yeah, you don't know what's holding what up around here." And I was just like, "What the fuck does that mean?" It's like shit gonna start falling down. Like, what does that mean? Like, as if like one beam. You know, 80 feet from your house will crack, and all of a sudden the whole side of the mountain just slides down the valley. It's like, I knew it! Um, it it's like an abandoned coal mine under the fucking house. It's That's actually all it. shale like, rock. Like, how ominous was that? He's like, yeah, you don't know what's holding what up around here. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, what's gonna happen? There's creepers three. Oh my god. I was expecting, like, the, the house to, like, come down and, like, domino all the other houses down the mountain. Oh, so anyway... The train would come and catch fire. It was a fucking nightmare. Check this out. Um, so I, I told Amber to maybe um, talk to some of her peeps at work and see if she can um, get like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which would allow us to, to spend a, a quality three days in Long Island. Ooh. But, but Kev, bottom line, where's the bed? I'm not going there. I feel like it's going to create like a, a, a big family rift. Like a rift in the system. Right. The like, only thing that would really, really damper the joke is if fucking Betty decides to just ship a bed after watching one of these episodes. No, I'm telling you it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to create fucking World War Three. You think Russia shooting down a Malaysian plane was bad? Fuck. Hey, like, hey. Gonna... Too soon, buddy. Hey, right. hey. Yeah. Those and Ob are still scattered in the woods and Kevin's making jokes. And Obama they're said they were wrong for doing it, so obviously. Oh, well, yeah. But they're denied too to like like a guy with like a rocket launcher, like, I don't know, I was here the whole time and the plane just it just came down. I don't know what happened. It was you crazy. It. Uh, one minute yeah. I'm drinking the vodka, the next minute the fucking plane's falling down. I it's amazing. Well that's what the that's what the, the rebel said. They said they quote unquote like we may be responsible for other planes going down the air but not this one like we totally had no idea this happened and like what? you know what? It's fucking look it's it's a nightmare it's a plane crashing is a nightmare for anyone who flies but to be shot out of the sky you know what that means i don't know if it's a nightmare i mean it's, it's pretty... that's that you don't think about that like flying to like no and the plane just fucking no. screech to the ground at 600 I, I actually think how awesome it would be to survive it like, I think if I somehow, like, survived a plane crash with, like, a like a bruise on my arm, like, wouldn't you feel like a fucking immortal? Like, you know Ric Flair survived a plane crash? It's like, Ric fucking, fucking Flair. I mean, he, he broke his back, but still, like, Dude. the guy's fucking alive, and he, he was in a goddamn plane crash, and everybody else around him died. So he is like, a 13-time like, world champion. Of course. That's a small plane. That's a small plane. Like, it's it's... It's like, okay, try to think this scenario. Let's, ah, this is how my brain works. So the, the plane gets shot down the other day. I don't, Ideally, what I'm well, thinking I, about is... I don't want to take this right now. This, is, this could be take a while. It's Go not going to take a while. It's not going to take a while. Yeah, my brain works four hours later. <laughs> and that's where you have nitrogen. No. So, uh, so I'm thinking in my head, like, if I was in that plane, I would hope to be in the part of the plane where the rocket hit. So I died on the explosion. Because if you don't die from the explosion and you get blown out of the airplane... You're falling 30,000 feet and smashing into the ground. Alive. You'll die. I'm so tired. Probably at like 10,000 feet. You may die. You may pass out from thin oxygen, but you may not. What if you're in your seat and the mask comes down, you put the mask on, and your piece of the plane is fucking hurling towards the ground and just smashing into the ground? I would just be really mad if I'm like completely on fire and then my parachute like goes off. I'm like, I didn't want like, I'm on a steady diet of Xanax and Benadryl when I fly, so... 
whatever the fuck happens. First of all, I think that if the plane crashed and I was in it, I'd come out like the T-1000. Like, I'd come out all, like, liquidy and, like, c- just show up and, like, check my watch. Like, well, oh, time to go to work. Like, I think it would be like that. But I probably not. I'd probably die. But I'm just saying. Like, I, I think that, uh, you that die if I survived a plane crash, if I was, like, kid. and I'd be mad if, like, a couple of other ones people did. Like, I'd be like, ah, I'm not, I don't feel so special. But if it was just me, really great. So, um, this is a good question. Is it? I first go out to you guys. No, it's a good question. Uh, it, it, for the people who are going to watch this. In Malaysia. Th- no, really. I mean, we should really try to get more people to interact on Facebook. And uh, What's your most fucked up flying fear? Like, and what do you do to Crashing. cure it? Crashing is like, that's it. Like, yeah, but some people, have, have people have scenarios. Crash. Like, listen... Oh, Everybody's yeah. afraid to crash and die, but some people might be afraid to burn. Some people might be afraid to, uh, you know, you know, get molested on the way down. People got to have fucked up theories about plunging to their death. Like, oh, That's my God. I'm gonna do. If I'm on a plane and it's going down, I'm grabbing the first person, male or female, and just fondling them all the way to the ground. Like, no yes. one's ever going to know, crunch. See, me, I have... Like, see these hands? I'm fucked up. I don't like Dorito cheese on them. And ever since I was 13, and the first time I ever fingered a girl, I couldn't eat with this fucking hand for a week. So, my, literally, I'm afraid of pussy. The plane's going, to, I'm not, let me take that back. I'm not afraid of pussy. I just don't like my hand in it. But if we're going down, I'm one finger butthole and one finger pussy, because I know I'm not going to have to eat fucking Doritos or a sandwich with this hand ever again. I'm going in. Two fucking fingers. Yeah. So. I want to fucking... but, but guys, I just realized why me and Nate didn't get along when I was growing up. You had because the... I always had Doritos on my hands. No, no, because the fear, the, the fucked up part of my brain didn't kick in until I fingered a girl. And next thing you know, you wake up the next day and you're like, you know, grandma makes you a fucking sandwich at Rancho Pines Camp. And you're like. I want to, I want to hear like Nate's confession after a while. You know why I didn't like you for so many years? You high five me one time, and then I got cool ranch all over my thumbs. Or you can just wash your hands. I mean, soap is available. It's still mentally fucking. Sometimes, it, it, dude, I was thirteen. Sometimes it takes more than soap. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And two, why are your hands always inside the the girl? Like you don't need to put the whole hand in there. No, like, like I, I said, when I crash, crazy, like this, I'm not even going. We had that for lunch today. I'm you not even going shocker. I'm just you going. Must have the biggest vagina in all of Waterford. I'm going longhorn finger to the butt, or from the vads to the butt. Just fucking, dude. The plane's crashing. I'm finger fucking somebody. Or screaming and shitting your pants. I'm gonna scream and shit my pants. Okay. A I lot. probably will too, but it, I sound a lot cooler by trying to finger bang the chick next to me. Like, I mean, this thing about it, you're on a roller coaster and it, you take that first dip, that feeling of falling, but like now you're actually like falling. There's no parachute, there's no harness. You're going to hit the ground. Yeah, I'm finger. I'm finger banging. Well, you have a heart attack and die. That'd be perfect. Bang, 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 bang. I'll just fucking yell at everybody. Be like, you're going to die. Show me a tip. You're lucky you start like molesting the I didn't mean for that to come out. Like, like, altitude, like, we're gonna make it. And you're like, oh, I'm sorry. Show me a tent. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have Purell? I just, I need Purell. Yeah, the, the fucking plane levels out, and I'm like, fuck. Gotta cut the hand off. I'll tell you something, though. If, if the plane went down and, <laughs> and a song like this started playing, I think I'd be okay. <laughs> That would be like perfect. <laughs> and the captain's like, we're gonna see. You're on thin ice, Maverick. Dude, um. Alright, alright, stop this. <laughs> alright. And the most fucked up part is like, obviously, this plane broke apart in the air, they didn't have a chance, but, yeah. you know, like, in my free time. The exploding the- fucking warhead that ripped through the oh bottom of it. Oh, Mike. Even if it was a, it was a rocket, 
even if it blew a hole, even let's say it, it blew up next to the plane and blew a hole in the plane, the pressure would immediately blow the hole bigger, and the plane would just break up before it hit the ground. That's why it's so scattered. It broke Th- up. I think but Lou's on to something, though. It's the, the fucking guys that are standing around the crash site with their black, um, like, snow hats on. Right? You guys all know what I'm talking about? Like, you can't see their face, just their eyes are cut out. They're hmm. like, I, I really didn't see shit. Didn't even know it was coming down. Like, well, that's what happened. They, 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 the, the rebels like, were like, no, no, we've, we've shot other planes, but not this plane. So, beats up. <laughs> Sorry. But, like, I think, like, listen, this is what I do. Like, in my free time, I watch all those, like, because uh, they're all on YouTube. All, like, those, like, uh, shows from, like, A&E and Discovery. Like, like Air Disasters, Part 7, the Boeing 757. And the fucking eeriest thing about those plane crashes is, you know, like, they have, like, the TSA agents, like, interviewing them, like, well, the biggest piece we found was no bigger than the bottle cap, and the ridges on the bottle cap actually showed us that the plane had broken apart before it hit the ground, and, and like, wow, they knew all that. But the scariest part for me is when the plane's just going down, like, from mechanical problems, like the tail breaks or something like that, the pilots, 99% of the time, are, I guess, because of training or whatever the fuck it is, they, they usually keep their composure, and you hear it on the black box. And they fight that plane to try to recover the plane all the way to impact to the point where I was listening to a recording where this plane, uh, this particular model plane, uh, the, the, the tail would, would break, it would over, it would uh, over um, correct. So the plane would actually turn itself upside down. So the plane does this over the ocean at 30,000 feet. So from 30,000 feet all the way down and slow, it took like two minutes because they kept trying to spin the plane over and turn it over. You hear the recording of the pilots like, okay, turn the rudder, do this, do that. And they're talking back and forth to each other. Meanwhile, you know, in the fucking, in the passenger oh, area, yeah. the people like on the fucking ceiling, this <laughs> diarrhea and vomit flying around and shit. And some, the last thing Some bald said, scumbag in the back, oh, finger banging your last, mom. The last thing the one pilot, the, the, the co-pilot says is, here we go. And then they crash into the ocean and die. Like, they're like, Fighting it all cool and calm all the way to the fucking ground. Hey, 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 look. Water. Just quit. We're done. We're good. Good fight, guys. That's really what it's like. They just like, okay, here we go. We're crashing. And they just die. The plane just hits the fucking water at 600 miles an hour. Okay, so 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 back to... Can, can anybody tell us your most fucked up fear? Like, how you're going to die if you're crashing into the plane? Is it is it head trauma from the plane spinning? Bouncing your fucking skull all over shit. Drowning. Drowning's got to be up there. Right. Drowning while a fucking shark is looking at you like, dude, the minute you stop fucking breathing. Like surviving the impact but not able to get your seatbelt off and just going down under the uh, water. Fuck that, bro. So yeah. That's- so again, Xanax, Benadryl for anybody watching fucking Lou right now. Honestly, try it. I, I don't care. I'll fail a drug test. I'm going to be flying in a few weeks, probably like a month. Where are you going? Oh, you're going to Texas. Will you bring back Lone Star? When I get down there, I'll figure out if I can mail it up here because I don't want to bring it back. You booked the flight? No, I'm going to probably book it uh, next week. I want to fly. Here's what's funny. I want to go on a Thursday and come back on a Sunday, right? So everyone says you should book your flight like six weeks in advance. It's Mm -hmm. cheaper. So I was going to book it for the end of August, but it's like $485. But if I wait till like the first or second week of September... It's like two hundred eighty-five dollars, like half the price. Well, yeah, because people are probably trying to vacation before summer's over, and then yeah, September so like, school's it just, in. It just the way you book it, whatever. So I found a you know straight trip, no layover. Oh, from fuck JFK you. to Austin, four hours, JetBlue for two hundred eighty-five bucks. I'm probably gonna book it this week or next. So I'm gonna go on a Thursday, which is September fourth, or the next Thursday is September eleventh. <laughs> so on September eleventh, it's like. $50 cheaper than September 4th. <laughs> I I'm wonder why. To Not too and many I'm people are booking flights that day. No, I'm either going the 4th or the week after the 11th. I'm not, I'm, or, or the 18th. I'm not going on September 11th. Like, let's, come on. Can't happen twice. Lou, just do me a favor. <laughs> While you're on the plane, will you just, whoever's next to you, will you at least get them to throw us a like on Facebook? There could be that one fucking old dude that has no business liking our page. And I'll know you came through. 
that's what I'll do. I'll, when I'm on the plane with a stranger for hours, I'm like, hey, you know, uh, on Sundays, more once a week, we hey, friends. Hey, hey, hey. I went to fucking Texas. I didn't promote Facebook. I found an eight ball of cocaine within my first two hours. You can get us a like on Facebook, dickhead. That has nothing to do with each other, but I'll, I'll try. Well, I'm, I'm saying you got to put yourself out there. R says that's one crunchy pickle. <laughs> that's kind of gay. Isn't it? Now, so, if you say if you say it in a normal hetero voice, it's fine. But if you say it in a snagglepuss voice, that's one. Crunchy pickle. Oh, hey, did I tell you guys, and Lou, I was actually, I meant to, I got into Netflix last night, so after Kevin didn't reply, I was going to email you back. I was going to email you back to see if you wanted to hop on for a quick five minutes. Uh, Two things I wanted to ask you. One doesn't need to be talked about on the show because it has nothing to do with well, kind of has something to do with the show. But Thank one is, up, I, I, met a guy, I met a guy Saturday who has legit screen printing, like, all the equipment. He said, like, he'd throw shirts together for five bucks a pop for us. Well, let's but, definitely not put that in the show because we want to charge more than five dollars. Well, obviously, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, is... You know, you come up with, you know, the, the the beer checks, but you can't just write beer check on a shirt. I think we would need a fucking, some sort of logo or something to go with it. You're good with that shit. You, you can love bring up topics and I have to edit it out of the show. You just want to make my fucking life miserable. Why do I got to edit this? Because if you're, t- you say we get the shirt for $5 and I say, hey. Oh, yeah, let's stop saying the number. Let's just that say. $5, you piece of shit. Let's just say, like, at a decent discount. <laughs> Ugh. Well, you didn't say a decent discount. You said five dollars. Well, I was so trying to drive the point. Ass. I was trying to drive the point home that I mean, for like, if we all threw in twenty bucks a piece, we can get like a dozen shirts and put them yeah, out there. So, so uh, Kelly pretty much finished the website. I haven't checked it in a few weeks, but I'm gonna. Uh, oh, and gonna... by the way, this guy uh, um, is very appreciative of the fact that I even asked him to do <laughs> shit for us. So I don't think we'd have a problem getting. He's actually, um, he's actually gonna drop me off some shirts on Friday. He's like, "Listen, just give me a fucked up T-shirt that you've always wanted," and I'm like, "I've always wanted a just a solid blue T-shirt with a white coat hanger that's a doctor underneath it." You guys don't get it? Yeah, abortion. Is, Got yeah. it. Is Woo! it is it a little much? It's it, it's different and it's plain. So he's actually making those for me. And uh, the second thing, production. The second thing I wanted to ask you, Lou, is um, one, keep going with Wolverine. But Cletus is getting some good feedback. I was gonna see if you would uh, maybe give Cletus like a, a three to five minute interview just to get a little background on him. I'm going to say something about Cletus right now. Like, the last video I watched, the one that started the shake weight, I was laughing a little bit in the beginning, and then you, like, go all over the place to get to, like, the circle jerk. No, like, no, no, I no. Like, like, all the elements of, like, a funny story, but just misplaced them all. It was because th- that that actually, I guess it's not as funny to you because it was more of an office joke for us. So everybody in the office got it right away. All right, the I elevator mean, thing scattered but, but around. I, I don't know. want more than, like, the five people who watch the show. It, just, it, it can't be inside. So I thought it was funny. I, I'm not saying it wasn't funny. The, the shake weight, the fact you have a shake weight is fucking weird. I found it at PJ's house. Yeah, so. whatever. I found it at someone's house, and I use it now. Yeah, that's, is that's he like, going to get it? He's getting the shake weight? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, but do like I do in the commercial. The guy's like... Oh, oh is he? Oh. He's got... And then he's like, oh, ah, five guys. Ah. Burners. South Park, they made fun of the shake weight one time, and they had like, like Stan's mom was like obsessed with doing the shake weight. And like after you did like a minute and a half burn, it would spray like a spritz on you to like cool down. It's like cool down spritz. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and, spray in the face. and then like the shake weight would talk. So like every like twenty minutes, they're like, hey, work, let's do it again. She's like, my arms are tired. He's like. Come on, your arms are always tired. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, come on. Almost done. Almost done. Uh, uh. 
and it would fucking spray water on her face. I mean, the guy who made the shake weight has to be the world's best practical joker of all time. Because there's no fucking way that he thought that idea would become what it is today. This fucking every Walmart, as seen on TV, and shake weight, and fucking 10 million people have that in their fucking house. Uh. Even, Rick, even Richard Simmons is like, I don't know, that's kind of gay. It is. It's so gay. <laughs> on the commercials, they got like a glistening, muscular man. He's like, uh, just 10 minutes a day and my biceps are twitching. You really gotta do this for 10 minutes? My arm's getting tired right now. <laughs> Whatever it is, I don't know. I never Which read the Which just goes that. to show you, I can completely beat off. I, I run the full scenario in my head, and then when I finally start the act, it's like, bang! Right to it. Now, now is that shake weight in your house just a joke, or, is, or like, are you like work are like on the toilet just like... <laughs> In a minute, honey. <laughs> no. The the shake weight is just... It's here. Like I said, I, I seen it at my buddy's house. And I said... It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. Well, I just thought it was a good prop, you know? Get out and shake it. It's a good prop. Oh, my God. We, have, we can do a lot with the shake weight. I mean, obviously, it helps you get buff. Triceps, biceps. Your core. Your core, especially. How are you? How am I getting my core right now? Like, I don't even feel anything. You gotta use two hands, bro, and like really lean into it. Like, like this, like. Yeah. But what if you fucking miss? I'd be the guy with like a black eye. I'd be like, dude, I was totally getting my shake weight on last night. Started sweating and bang. That would be my luck. There's no way. There's not 900 people a year going to the hospital with like shake weight injuries. Can we go? Can can we Google the stats, Lou? I guarantee you can Google some kind of shake weight stats. I'm sure there is. I'm sure they're out there. Like when we first came out, people were like going knocking themselves unconscious, breaking windows and walls. If I only had a strap, I wouldn't kill my mom. It's like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> the bowling is pretty intense, so I I get it. Shit can get a little crazy every now and then. Yeah, oh, that's funny. So like I was saying, the Cletus video, it's funny, but I, I guess it's inside, so maybe like the way you told it's more to the people who know the story. But I, I was laughing, like, because I knew, like, where you were getting to. But, like, all the elements I felt like were, like, the, like 50% of them were misplaced. Because, like, it was, like, you went to a guy's house, and they jerked off on a cookie and circle jerk. But, like, it was, like, it's, like, out of order. It just felt like I knew what you were getting to, and then you didn't get to it, and then you got to it later. I was like, what are you, what's yeah, that? People like it, they like it. No, no, I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying. The response for Cletus has actually been, it's actually weird. Lily, um, walking through Storch the other day to get ice cream, um, was like, you're not my dad, you're Cletus. And I'm like, we're standing, and people are looking at us now. Oh. It's like, listen, you... Now, if that, if that keeps... Going on, that's not a good thing. No, no. Daddy, why do you have all your teeth? Oh, fuck. <laughs> or worse, she'll show the teacher at school, like, look at my dad's videos on Facebook. It's like child abuse. <laughs> right. The fact that she did one with Cletus is probably not the best, but. Probably. We needed uh, to know where the mermaids came she from. Was, she was present while your, uh, your, your, uh, um, <laughs> wife's, uh, fucking brother in law said cunt ass whore. And whatever he did oh. for like 20 minutes. She's like, Daddy, play with me. And he's just like, cunt, bitch, <laughs> cock whore. So I'm sure that's, that didn't help either. Well, it's gonna, that's going to be me in like a couple of months. What do you mean? No, when, when Kylie gr starts growing up a little bit. Like, yeah, that's going to be me doing the same thing. But I'm, <laughs> I'm a, I'd probably be like more apathetic, like, Oh, yeah, 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 I yeah, am yeah. so 100. I'm so good with. I'm so good with language. I really don't drink a lot, especially around Lily. So, yeah, I mean that was that was quite the the scene. You know, I got some feedback from the show uh, from somebody today. He said that uh, when we were talking about the cab driver thing along out, he's like, I know exactly who you're talking about, <laughs> and he's saying this guy. Ian Hicksville, and I was like, "That's the fucking guy." That's uh, the guy. He's been like, yeah, yeah, the guy that. No, 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 the guy that was like, you know, the guy with the weird scraggly smoke cigarette Nick Nolte <laughs> voice. 
Uh, like he, he's like, he's like, I know that guy. I fucking see him all the time. He's been there for years. And I'm dude. like, yeah. And apparently there's a, there's like clones of him all over Long Island. How <laughs> is, um, what do you call it? I totally lost my, my, my train of thought, but, uh, yeah, the cab rides, I almost feel like, um, this Friday I, I should take a cab ride somewhere. Or something. That's it. Just, just kind of see what kind of response I get. That's how cheap it is upstate. You just like take a cab ride, like whatever, it's six bucks. No, it's really true, and and they're, and they're not dicks either. Like they're pretty cool. Like I remember we went, we were going to an Incubus concert, and the guy let us like smoke pot in the car and fucking drink. Like he didn't give a shit. Like in Long Island, they fucking regulate that shit immediately. Well, you can't smoke cigarettes in the cab in Long Island. Like every once in a while, maybe two, three o'clock in the morning, the guy will let it slide. But like if I'm leaving, like, we used to leave from Farmdale to go to the bar at, like ten o'clock. I'd be like, yo, can I have a cigarette? Dude, you're right. I can't, man. I can't. But about the cigarette thing, which is great, because, again, my cab driver experience, one, took us the long way home once. Now, now mind you, my, my wife just became pregnant, and he's driving us through the back streets of Staten Island, like, yeah, now this is, like, the li- little Harlem, because they're, all the crack and everything, like, pointing out the bars or to get hookers and shit. And then, two, was the time that I talked about, like, Doing 90 to the Staten Island Expressway and having an undercover just like, hey, hey, you always drive like an asshole? And he persists to admit to doing cocaine on his whole shift. But if you light a cigarette, people might fucking die. I've, I've seen so many like cab rides, not myself. I actually never threw up in a cab, but I've seen other <sighs> people do it. Oh, and there's no, I never get a reaction from the cab driver. He, he never gets angry about it. There's got to be some weird secret he has. Like, I didn't clean that shit up. Like, it must happen. Like, like his hat heat. That's why. Yeah. Well. I, like, there was a St. Patrick's Day where I, uh, I did an Irish exit. We were in the city. And I did an Irish exit and somehow found my way home. And then I got on the train by myself. And, of course, I slept through my stop. So I woke up uh, like three stops away, which is a good 30, 30 minutes away, I think. And I just remember being so drunk and, and uh, my phone had died. I didn't have any money on me. It, it was just really unpleasant. And I just, just remember there was this girl like bitching to her boyfriend, like just, I don't know, like, what are we doing here? It's really it like three in the morning. And I, I just, I remember going over to her and just going, shh. <laughs> And she, like, lost her mind. She's like, no, you, you just did what he did. You, 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 you just say something to him. Like, he, she, like, she, like I thought the guy was going to kick my ass. And I'm just like, I don't know, I'm just joking. Like, oh. So then I get in the cab, and there's two, like, there's two other people in the back with me. Like, That's the worst. Two, dr- it's two drunk guys. And one of them's a real asshole. I'm the, in the middle. The, the, you know how unpleasant it is in the middle, in the back of the cab seat? With two like, dudes you don't know? Right, and it's like you're you're trying to like position your leg. <laughs> hey, guy. and the guy like he, he I, I guess I'm like leaning on him a little bit, but he th- like he he makes it sound like I'm like crossing my legs on him. He, he's just, like, bro, get off me. Get you try to tuck my junk, you scumbag. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, get your knee out of I'm, my balls. But I'm no better. I'm no better. I'm in this cab with this collection of assholes, <laughs> and then and then I finally get home to to, to the campus. And I'm like, you guys take debit cards? And he's like, you didn't fucking say anything the whole fucking ride? So then he pulled out that old rickety, like, like, <laughs> the scheme that, was, that he purchased from a Sears and Roebuck in 1975. And he's, like, so mad. I'm like, oh, you want a receipt? I'm like, yeah, of course I'd like a receipt, sir. Thank you. I have to you. Like, I, it was just, it's just, like, one of those nights where it's, like, I, I myself, like, no one else was around me, and everybody's, like, worried about me, but I'm like, this is, this is me, this is the shitty shit that I do by myself, like, almost get killed, and, like, beat up at a couple of places, and, and I love it because all the people I was with at the bar have no idea where I am, I'm miles away, I've, 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 I've like, fucking ditched town, I Irish goodbye, Irish exit, yeah. done quite a few times and it's never a fun thing because I don't mean to be a dick it's just like my mentality it's like I gotta get out of here before I vomit on somebody or see like I, th- I think that's hilarious I hate when people get so fucking offended like 
You, you, oh, bro, you just left us at the fucking bar. And it's like, dude, I went home alone, puked on myself, and got shit on my shoe. You probably got laid, and you're fucking mad at me because I left the bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's like... Isn't that so it, true, though? It's, it's like the next day, everybody's like, what the fuck? It's like, why don't you say goodbye? Because I'm yelling things, like, randomly... <laughs> Because I don't have no control yeah. right now. I got like, drunk in Tourette's. The last, thing my, last thing on my mind is like, have a great night, guys. See you later. Like, that's not... Yeah, I didn't say goodbye because my feet are the only part of my body that's still functioning right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm on fucking... And that, was the, and that was limited mobility at best. Well, you know what's funny? Since you brought up the Irish exit, I was talking to somebody recently and they were telling a story, but it was like a nightmare story, like about someone she knew who's her boyfriend did that they were out drinking and then she was looking for her boyfriend <clears throat> and they couldn't find him and when they finally like somehow like she was calling his phone and the person who picked up his phone was just a stranger on the street and this guy was like two miles away on the street like sleeping and the and the person's like yeah he's right here he's just like laying on the floor and there was like a huge drama and I was like, yeah, I pretty much do that like nine times out of ten when I go out. Like <laughs> Kevin will turn around like, hey where's Lou? And I'm like Sitting in the dumpster, like eating Chinese food, like I found this Chinese food. And I was hungry, and I'm yeah, asleep I right always, here. Good. I, I, I did that. I did find him a few times doing that. Like he was outside of the bar on the on the corner, like shoveling uh, chicken chow mein into his fucking face. And I was like, "Where did you find it? over there? Look, it's a Chinese place." I was like, "On Avenue C, really?" <laughs> Do you know how disgusting this fucking street is? You're getting Chinese food? Oh that's, my god! That's something I'm actually proud of. Like, pe- like streets of Manhattan where like people hang out in tons of bars. Like I've slept on those streets, like a real homeless person. Like I remember my birthday was it last year? Or it was two years ago. My sisters came to the bar. We were at uh, what was that bar? We were at um, um Manitoba's. Uh, Manitoba's. That's right. And everyone's like, "Where's Lou?" I can hear like people saying, "Like, where's Lou?" And I'm like. I have a fuck. I went to the deli on the corner, mm. and for like a dollar, I bought a Rice Krispie treat, like a homemade Rice Krispie treat mm. that was the size of a fucking brick. No that sounds so good. It was like six inches by six inches by mm. eight inches. It was fucking enormous, and I couldn't. It was so big, I couldn't like bite a piece of it. So all you could do was like bite a chunk out of it and like spit some out. Dude, like, I have semi locked you all right now. Like that sounds so good. It was awesome. And I remember I had like a like a Starbucks like coffee, like you know like the jar coffee, and like these like hipsters are walking by like these yuppie fucking pricks, and I'm like spitting out Rice Krispies and I'm spilling my coffee. I'm just like, meh, 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 meh. like look at that guy, what's he doing? It's like sitting on the fucking like a step in someone's fucking front door. Of their you apartment. know, what? I just want to get completely shit faced in Manhattan or Brooklyn, sit on the corner, and every time a hipster has something to say, I'd be like, dude. You have ass hair on your face. Boom. You are a pussy. One of the ultimate blackout drunk stories I've ever heard, and we, I, we might have to get him on the show, <laughs> is our friend, we, his name was Ben, and we call, his nickname was Benny Belich. But he had, like, the ultimate, like, what the fuck? How did you, how did you, how are you even alive right now story? And, uh, Lou, you want to tell it? It's pretty fucking... Crazy. I'll tell the story. I I, I remember when it, we 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 first heard the story. I told like everybody this fucking story. It's great. So a friend of ours uh, fuck, uh goes to, goes out drinking in Manhattan with another friend. And now this guy Benny lives in Jersey. Now he lives in another fucking country, but he lived in Jersey. And so he basically everyone either has to go to Penn Station or everyone I know either goes to Queens or up north to Bronx. But he's got to go all the way down to the fucking uh, the train to get to, over to Jersey. The fucking uh, Port Authority. So he's walking, he's drunk, he's blacked out, and eventually he comes, hold on a second, I dropped my phone. He, uh, he's walking down the street by himself, like, breaks away from the group somehow, and he comes across a van parked on the side of the road in Manhattan, but it's running. The van is fucking running, idling. So in his drunken state, he climbs into the driver's seat, puts the car in drive, and takes off with the van and starts driving it down the fucking street, just going see. south towards Port Authority. What he didn't realize was in the back of the van is four guys waiting for the other guy who's driving the van to come out of the building to drop <laughs> off a package or something. So he pulls the car over. The guys then take him out of the van and beat the shit out of him on the side of the, on the, side of the street and fucking pummel him. 
and he has to go to court. He gets, you know, they call the cops. He gets in trouble for like, he gets in trouble for like drunk in public, DWI, oh. uh, all this, all this <laughs> litany of shit. But apparently, and this is what everyone thinks, all the guys must have been like illegal aliens because none of them ever showed up to court. So he just got off. He just got off. Nothing ever happened. They, yeah, you couldn't prove that he actually took the fucking. Yeah, but that's what he did. He fucking just saw like, oh look, this man. This is a car that drives. How do you dies, not see? Drives. Well, hold on. How do the 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 four people in the back like? It must have took a minute for it to register. Like, hey, hey, yeah, exactly. Like, that's not like, Paco. Yeah, that. This, so he that's... didn't get in and, like check. He just sat down, put it in drive, and just started driving downtown. <laughs> <laughs> and how about the guy who walks out of the building? Like, dude, really, <laughs> really, asshole. <laughs> I just delivered a half ounce of Coke. All right. Could be an undercover. Could be a sting and you fucking pull this joke. Yeah, Oldest please. fucking joke in the book. Hope you all get deported. For me, like, you know, when you wake up and go, what happened last night? Like, I hope that that shit, that, that stuff that I didn't fucking Dude, do, that's you know? awesome, though, because that, that's like a number one movie go-to. Like, you get drunk, you get into the cop car or something. This guy actually did it. Like he woke up the next day and was like, I stole a fucking van with four yeah. dudes in the back. Not one. But the best part is, you're so drunk, it's not even like, I'm going to go steal this car. Your your mind is just making, like, your lower brain is just making snap decisions. So it's like, here's a van, no one's in the driver's seat, it's on, it's running, that van is for me. That's my van <laughs> to go. Like, no. Who's that for me? I already have the paperwork here. Like, <laughs> it's like, I mean, I can imagine, like, and if you're blurred, you know when I get really drunk, like only one eye kind of works at one time. You can't have both of them. Oh, uh, driving time. home like and this. Like, well, it's, 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 it's uh, kind of like, I'm, that's, that's for me. That's how I'm getting home. I would love to talk to this guy because I need to know, like, does he get in and adjust the radio, find a, <laughs> find a song he likes, or or is it just get in and go? Like, You're lucky you didn't run anybody over, crash into anything. Like, just fucking <laughs> just got in and started driving. Dude, it's the fucking... Best. That's awesome. So there's a few. I've heard a few like kind of like ridiculous like drunk stories like that, but nothing that ended like funny. A lot of them end like horrible. Like you know, you get drunk, you start driving, and all of a sudden, my, when I was in high school, or maybe like the year after I graduated high school, uh, you know, when I was in high school, friends of mine. I mean, I didn't have a license, so I didn't drive. But everyone I knew drove drunk. You just got, even if you had like two beers. You just drove. Like, you didn't even think about it because you're, like, 17, 18. You're like, whatever. I'll just deal with it. I don't give a shit. And All I right. had a friend. There's two friends driving home. And the cop pulled him over. And uh, <laughs> it's not as ridiculous as that. The cop pulls him over. And he doesn't even make me out of the car. He asks for the license registration. He realizes he smells beer. So he just puts the flashlight on my friend's face, looks at the right eyes, and goes, say the alphabet. And my friend goes... A B C D E F. You can't sing it. A B C D E F. What? You can't goes, sing it. He, he's no. He he says he he goes he goes all the way to G, and then he gets to G. He goes back to A for some reason, and and exactly what he does. He goes remix. He goes A B C D E F G A B C D what? And my friend who's in the past, she looks at him and goes like, "Are you fucking serious?" Cops like, "Get out of the car. Get out of the car." Like you can't say the fucking alphabet. And then they were going to make my other friend drive, but he was too drunk to drive, too, so he got a fucking D-Wee. And now, again, this is, like, typical, like, dumbass shit we used to do. He had a D-Wee. While he had a D-Wee, he bought a brand-new car somehow, got insurance, or maybe didn't insure it, and drove it around for a fucking year without a license and got into a car accident during that year that the car was fucking uninsured, he didn't have a license, and still managed to not go to jail not ruin his license for the rest of his life and, you know, just a fucking hiccup. But anybody else would have been fucked. Would have been mm. fucking screwed. That's funny. Good times. Good times at Fremont High. Yeah, I'm gonna go watch some Rescue Me. I'm, I'm pretty out of it right now. Alright, we're gonna call it a night. This is episode 18. Hope you guys enjoyed. And again, if you're watching this, as you can see, we're keeping it the full hour. Well, it's gonna be like it's, it's gonna probably be like an hour and ten minutes. I was gonna say after you do some editing, we should be at fuck ten. Yeah, definitely edit now, motherfucker. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you cut that that out. And, I'm cutting uh, a lot out. Uh, anyway, so uh, enjoy the show, and we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Lou, hey. I'll, I'll start the.
Stop Here, hold on. Let me stop the recording. Yeah.